even when I went through addiction, you know, I was probably one of the only addicts that I know that retained a lot of pride. I've always had a lot of, maybe some, a lot of it's ego, but I don't, I don't feel it, especially now it's kind of, we, we sort of say this now, I get accused of being an ego merchant on a regular basis, but I always come back to this, to uh, Julius Caesar and Mark Anthony, it's only hubris if I fail. So kind of, a, I think there's a very fine line in life between, between, being ego and just being ballsy and actually having the the bottle and the the, the I, I go, I go out fuck it we're gonna we'll try and do this and if we can't and, and that's one thing for me and that's one thing that I was trying to get across to our guys I'm not afraid to fail I'm afraid of not trying do you know what I mean and that's and the that, kind of thing that's, um, that's that's great that's really um, yeah and you need I mean in this business you need someone who's ballsy I mean. yeah. <laughs> And I just, I think as, as addicts as well in general, we're driven by fear. You know, mm. we, we, we're sort of, uh, you know, we, yeah, we just, we're just driven by fear, whether it's fear of withdrawal or fear of having to deal with the consequences of our addiction or fear of having to, to deal with the, the psychological trauma that underpins it in the first place. I think we're just fearful people in general, really. So it's kind of, um, again, kind of almost sort of feel like you've, at our, our place now, I think, is all about leading by example. And it's about, like I say, just saying to our guys that it's okay to it's okay to fail, but it's, it's not okay not to try. And you've just got to try and constantly sort of push yourself for growth. And, and this this idea that, that, you know, growth happens outside of your comfort zone. So, so you've got to stretch yourself on a regular basis and take yourself into places where you feel uncomfortable and you're not 100% certain. And, because that's, again, it's, it's, it's about how you grow and how you learn, um, you know. So, yeah, I think a lot of the stuff, a lot of, I think a lot of lived experience recovery organisations are like that where it's almost kind of, the organisation, the community, almost like takes on almost not the same shape as the individual who's driven it personal journey, but very much some of the fundamental principles for those. Because like you say, all this stuff that I've ever seen, you've got like the well, Dave Hyam, um, you know, the, the people that you were sort of talking about before, like Winford, um, you know, these guys, all these recovery communities, they're normally driven by one individual who, who is a carrier, you know, in that Bill White sense of the word, someone who's really, really sort of drives this stuff. But quite often, like I say, you'll find that the, the principles that underpin the community are also the same principles that underpin th that primary individual's own recovery themselves. And I don't know if that's because we try and push across that if this works for me, it works for you, or just almost as if people recognise, well, these are the qualities that, that help them to get there. Maybe this is some stuff that I need to look at as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like know. it's like setting an ethos, isn't it? Yeah, that, I think yeah, I think that was it, what I was looking for in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, I, and, I, and, and that's, I guess that's what I've seen when I've looked from the outside in at some of those people. It is one, generally one person that starts it off. And then, well, I think Dave McCarty said it's infectious, isn't it? Then yeah, the people are yeah. responding to the things that that person is is emanating out, and if yeah. you have this ballsy attitude, um, that helps. That's just one element of what you have that 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 other people pick up. 